Today's show, we're going to talk about Annette Sampson, a friend of mine, and how she landed her first job out of college. It's kind of a crazy, amazing story. I was having dinner with her last night, and she said, yeah, I was in the middle of an interview, and I looked up and noticed that the hiring manager had some African violets up on his shelf. So she said, I made a quick pivot because he was asking me a question I didn't know anything about. And she said, oh, tell me about your African violets. They ended up having about a 10-minute discussion out of a 20-minute half of the interview about the African violets on his shelf. She ended up winning the job and getting hired. She stayed there for three and a half years. It was a wonderful job, straight out of college, that she beat out four other candidates for, and she didn't even have a degree in the area that they were looking for. It's an amazing story. And the one thing we want to talk about is the questions that you ask and why they're so important in your interview. Let's discuss. Hi, I'm Pat Batchelor, and this is the DIY Engineering Career Builder Podcast. With 25 years as an engineer and 10 as an engineering recruiter, I'm now stepping into the role of job search and career coach. I want to help you find a job in half the time and have fun doing it. Whether you're looking for your first job right out of college, your next job, or perhaps one day even your dream job, I'm here to guide you to the next step. This would be fun, entertaining, educational, and most importantly for you, empowering. So let's get started. Okay, you're in for a treat today as we talk about Annette Sampson and how she used the power of asking wise questions and how she used it to land her first job. And we're going to highlight the five most important questions you can ask during your interview to land your first job, either out of college, the next step, or even the step beyond. So I'm just going to encourage you before we get started, go check out the www.diyejs.com website. And you're going to learn tips and tricks on what happens when you apply for a job, why nobody calls you back. But also there's the 1 in 1,000 course, which is going to help you separate yourself from a 1,000 other engineers who are just applying for a job online. This course is really designed for those people who are stuck at home, unemployed, discouraged perhaps, who are hitting apply, 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 and wondering, how come nobody's calling me back? It's going to help you bridge the gap between that and getting your interviews. And of course, if you get enough interviews, you're going to get hired. So that's what the 1 in 1,000 course is, is it helps you to separate yourself from a 1,000 other engineers who are only hitting apply. Okay, so check it out. I think you're going to enjoy it. It's a terrific course. So today we're going to talk about my friend. Last night, my wife Brenda and I, we were over having some friend, uh, dinner with some friends, and she was just laughing about how her kids were doing. And then she said, you know, the first job I landed out of college I landed because I asked about African violets. And I'm like, okay, well, let me figure this out. So she said she got her degree in plant science. So she knew all about horticulture and plants and how they grow. And from the University of Clemson, and she had moved down to, I think, Gainesville, Florida. And she was living there in town. And a friend of hers said, hey, there's a job open over in the plant department. They need a a manager of the greenhouse. And so she was like, great, that sounds terrific. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So she went and talked to the guy and he said, yeah, we're going to start interviewing, but it's going to be at about a month. And so she's like, "Hmm, okay, well, I need to cool my heels for a month and you know, wait. And then another friend said, hey, I, I know the professor over in the virology microbiology department is looking for a lab manager. Maybe you should apply for that job. If nothing else, just give you some experience in interviewing. She's like, okay, sure. So she goes over, she gets ready. She walks in on time. She's sharp and looking good. She sits down and the guy starts asking her questions and she's answering it. But while he's asking, she's looking behind him going, oh, I see this and this and this. And she took notice of his environment. And that's the most imp- one of the most important things you can do when you go in for an interview with the hiring manager, the person that has the power to say yes or no, about your job, you want to notice if you're in their office, you absolutely want to spend a couple of minutes just picking it up. What is on the walls? If there's a picture of a dead head poster, you know, the Grateful Dead, and, and it's up there and it says 1967 there or whatever, it, chances are he's a dead head. And if you know anything about those guys, you just say, 
ask a question relevant to that. If there's a if there's a bunch of NASCAR models, number 24 over there or something, you just go, oh, okay, he's in NASCAR. Or if there's a picture of a family, you know, and if she's interviewing you and you're talking to a lady and there's a picture of family, you go, oh, she's all about family. So you want to pick up on what people, the mementos, the things that brighten their day, that they're going to put in their office that help them to understand, oh, this is important to me. And so you want to take note of those. And then when you immediately walk in, if you see something that you know a question or two about, just kind of put that in there and then maybe even ask about it. You want to try and move the interview from being just about the interview and the technical aspects of the interview to, hey, we're real people. And I see you're a real person and you've got an interest in NASCAR, you know, so you don't say it. You just say, hey, tell me about NASCAR. You know, have you been to any races lately or, you know, or, you know, tell me about your family. Oh, you know, and all of a sudden they start talking about kids or grandkids or uncles or whatever. And they get started and it helps them to just feel like because we all want to be, you know, everybody thinks their most interesting topic is themselves. <laughs> So hiring managers are no different. They want to be the, they're the center of their world. They think about them and their family and friends and the things they love most, they're typically going to put in their office. So you want to make sure that you acknowledge that and maybe even draw it out or a point or a question, either at the beginning or the, at the front of the interview, or maybe somewhere in the middle or near the end, you just go, oh, so Annette, she walks into this office. Again, This is she's got a degree in plant science, but she's interviewing for a lab manager role in the virology microbiology area of the university. She starts interviewing with the professor, and he's asking her questions. And then he starts getting technical, down in the weeds. Tell me about, you know, da, da, da. and she doesn't have a clue because she's not in, you know, she, <laughs> she doesn't have a clue about what he's talking about. And so she just looks up and she sees these African violets and she goes, so he kind of finishes her question. He goes, you know, before I went, tell me about your African violets. She just hijacked the whole interview and said, tell me about the African violets because she's plant science. She knew it. She knew what she was talking about. And he goes, oh, well, you know, I'm a member of the American Biology, you know, Plant Society or whatever it was. And she goes, Really? She goes, well, you know, I love African violets. He goes, well, me too, you know. And she goes, well, have you ever used this technique to, you know, propagate them? He's like, yeah, you know. Well, do you, have you noticed how much water they need? And she just, they went on for half the interview. She, <laughs> she hijacked the interview about a topic she knew something about. And, and she related to him as a person. And she talked about at least one of his favorite subjects was the African violets, even though he's in virology. She was wise. And she said, Pat, if I tried to answer the question he was asking me, I didn't have a clue, so I might as well switch subjects, you know? And so she just kind of went, Zoop, and <laughs> she hijacked the interview. Anyway, the interview was over. She said, well, I appreciate you talking to me. And he's like, yeah. And she goes, really loved it. And, you know, always, always, always show enthusiasm about the job. Well, I'd love to hear back from you. You know, what's the next steps in the interview? And I am really excited about this. If you're excited or not, at least fake it. Because if they make you an offer, then you can decide to take it or not take it. But you don't want to mail it in. So, you know, it's not for me. Because you just don't know. Unless it's, you know, just something completely egregious or you just go, it's the wrong thing. I have to relocate, whatever. If it's not the fit, you know, probably don't even want to go in for the interview. But she, she applied for the job. She hijacked the interview with African violets and she got hired. The guy said, he, he called her up and said, hey, I want to make you an offer. We're going to get you started at this, but I need an answer in two days because I'm leaving in three weeks. I'm going to Israel for the rest of the year. I need someone here that I can teach what needs to happen and is going to be able to take the ball and run with it. And so she's, you know, so much for plant, you know, for a greenhouse manager. <laughs> She started out being a lab manager. She had the skills. She didn't have any of the formal training, but she had a business degree. She knew how to do undergrad research and graduate research, and she knew how to kind of take control of a lab, and so she did everything that was needed. He would write up the uh, the lab 
um, procedures and things she needed to do. He would email it to her in the morning. She would pick it up and get everything ready. The graduate students came in. She said she just read the lesson plan. And she, you know, nobody knew it was the wiser that she didn't know anything about virology. So what she did was change the subject, but she was real. And so Annette was just so intuitive in understanding, okay, what the job description says they need and what really they need can be two completely things. And we're all somewhat fickle in organizations. There's competing interests with different people, what they really want to see. But at the end of the day, most companies want to see five things that they are looking for in their soft skills. They want to see competency. They want to see reliability. They want to see trustworthiness. You know what? They want to know if you'll listen, learn, and show up and take care of whatever their need is. You know, we're always trying to prove ourselves. Sometimes they just want you, would you just shut up and listen? So being able to be listening, if you come into an interview, you don't have to talk the whole time. Ask wise questions and let them talk. If an interview, if the person, the interviewer, the person that's working for the company, it really helps if they do most of the talking. Because you're not trying to prove yourself, and you, we think we're trying to prove. No, just listen and learn and figure it out. Okay, so here's the thing. These are the five questions that I would encourage anybody, if you're interviewing for a job, these are the top, what I would call, top five questions that you should ask in going for an interview. And some of them are just kind of general. You know, tell me what the company looks like. But the way you would do that is question number one is, what do you like lit work? Why do you like working here? And what do you love about the job? So if you're asking that of your boss, you're automatically going to get a vibe. He's going to be upbeat and excited about it and say, man, we're doing amazing research here. We're doing amazing things. We're solving world problems. Or he's just going to go, you know, I just need somebody here for third shift, you know, night shift. I'm just tired. I don't want to have to stay up. I don't want to have to worry about it. I just need somebody to take care of this problem. Okay. You know, we're not trying to solve the world. I just need somebody to plug into this role. And if that's a fit, great. But if it's world, you know, if you're changing the world and doing something, you'll hear about it. So all that to say is, is that you want to be asking those questions about what they like about the job and get them talking. And they may say, I hate this job. I hate this place. I can't wait to get out, but I need somebody to help me. Would you please come? Well, then you can go. Okay, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't want to work there. Okay, so you want to learn why they like the job. The second one is, is you want to ask them, what's the win look like? If you decide to hire me and I'm here for the next year, what do you want me to have accomplished? What are the metrics? What are the goals that you have for me or anyone that gets hired in this role? What's the win look like? Now, that's a great question because a lot of times people just go, I need a CAD guy. Or, I need an engineer. You know, I've got so much work. I don't know what to do. You know, you know, you're up to, you know when you're up to your butt and alligators, it's hard to re remember that the job was to drain the swamp. Right. So sometimes engineers and managers are so flustered. All they just know is I need help. I'm not really sure exactly what kind of help they just say. I need a young engineer who's going to come in. I'm going to be able to give them tasks and they're going to be able to take it and run. Okay. Well, what does that really look like? So just getting them to ask those, if you ask that question, it gives you an idea and they may say, oh, we've got 15 metrics and we want you to, if it's a sales role, we want you to hit these sales numbers. We want you to, you know, this and this and this. If it's project management, oh, we've got four projects. We want you to master this software. We want you to have interviews with these companies, with these subcontractors. It could be that they've had it well thought out or they not had it thought out at all. Either way, you're going to know and you may have to kind of draw up your own metrics as far as, you know, what it is that you bring to the table and what a win looks like. And, you know, and you may always, they may, it, you just never know with the engineering firms, which one they lean. So be aware of that. And then the third question you ask is, um, is this a reasonable career path, you know? It, you want to kind of ask yourself this question, but you can ask them just say, for someone that you hire in this role, 
where do you see them going in the next five to 10 years? You know, is, are, are you going to hire them at an entry level? Then you're going to put them out in the field for a year. Then you're going to put them here for a year. And then you're going to get engineering training. And then they're going to become a senior engineer. And then they're going to get their PE. And then they're going to become vice president or whatever. What's your vision? And some companies have a very good ability to create a career path for certain individuals. And they'll say, you know, if you get going along this one and it's not quite the right fit, but we see you have skills over here. You know, we move people from one department to the other all the time, whether it's in sales or engineering or plant management or, you know, technical. So it's kind of a win-win. They say, look, we're just looking for great people. We bring them into the team. We get them started. And then where their skill sets and their abilities, we might figure it out later as we move forward in your career. If you hear that, Hmm, that sounds pretty good. Place where you can grow, a place where you can figure out where you fit within the organization, and and even just maybe even asking where's the organization going. Now that's a different question, but it is important. Is you know what's the vision for the firm? You know I see what you have on the website. What are y'all trying to do, and where are you trying to go? That's a good question to know because then you can determine if you're gonna if you're in alignment with what they want to see happen. The fourth question you want to ask is, what's the day-to-day look like? You know, when you come in, do they want you coming in early? Do they expect you to be there right at 8 o'clock sharp or 7 or 30 or whatever? You know, look, I'm going to walk around and anybody that's not there, I'm going to check off their list. You know, you didn't show up on time and they're going to dock your pay for an hour. Is that what it's like? Or is it, hey, just show up, flex time, no problem, take as much vacation as you want. As long as you get the work done that we ask you to do, we don't care. We've got flex time, we've got unlimited vacation, but we do expect you to meet the needs of the people that you're working for, okay? Whatever that day-to-day looks like, you want to get a feel of it, you know? Well, we usually you're in the office almost every day, except for Friday, we're going to be going out in the field and doing site inspections. We'll be back and we'll write reports. Or you'll usually be out in the office three days looking at inspection projects and you come in and write reports for two. Or... You know, we just need a CAD monkey, someone who's an engineer, but we're going to put you in and we just need you to oversee the CAD department, make sure all the CAD drawings are right, that they meet our quality control standards, because it's just super important because we're going to take those drawings and we're going to do this with them. And so we just need someone to fill that slot and you can go, oh, man, that's exactly what I love doing. You know, quality control, it's got my name on it. Woohoo. Or, you know. I'd rather go to the dentist and get my teeth drilled on. You know, you want to make sure, just kind of have an idea. What are, you know, do I really want to work here? Is this a dingy place or is this vibrant and full of energy or a little bit of both? Or, you know, for our town, it's a great place. He's a nice guy. You don't know. So just ask him, what's the day to day? So that's the fourth question. Fifth question. Okay. And then the last question is, is the next steps. Hey, I've loved being here. And usually this is at the very end. And this is kind of where you want to use a little bit of, of um, you want to, if you're, if you're truly interested in the company, if you're truly interested in the role, and you are like, man, I just hope, I hope, I hope they, they ask me. Then you want to show the appropriate level of enthusiasm about the job and the position. And you don't want to go, oh my God, this is great. You know, and jump up and down and say, please hire me. You know, please, 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 please. But you want to just kind of lean forward and go, I am so excited. Body language means something. So you want to have a smile you want to say. And especially as the interview moves along, if they're smiling and you're smiling, keep smiling right at them. Just, just smile and just go, man, I am so excited about this. I mean, I can hardly contain myself. And then when it comes to that point, you just say, look, I am so interested in this job. I am so into this role. I think I can add value. I'm really excited about it. I will learn. I will work as hard as I need to to be successful in this role. Please give me a shot. I want this job. So that's the appropriate level of enthusiasm about any particular job. You want to be enthusiastic about the role. You want to be sure that you are conveying that I am interested And I'm interested in this job and I want to work for you. So you want to be enthusiastic about the role. So 
let them know. And then they're going to say, oh, the next steps, we got 12 other people in interview, or, you know, really it's down to two. You're one. I kind of hope it works, but you should hear from us on Friday. Or, you know, we're all going on vacation. We're taking our week break. It's almost Christmas. We'll call you in January. Okay. January. So that way you're not sitting at home wondering, you know, are they going to call me? Are they going to call me? They're told you it's going to be three weeks. Now, in that time, there's certain things you should do. One is when the interview's over, always write a handwritten note and put it in the mail to whoever interviewed. So you got to get their card so you can know where to mail it. Why? It's old school. Yeah. It's what makes it special. And good manners never go out of style. So... If you can send them a handwritten card right after you and drop it in the mail, they'll get it in two or three days, and it's a reminder. Oh, this person's classy and has taste, you know. Or if there's some kind of leave behind, you can say, okay, well, here's my little brochure I made of myself and my skills. You could leave that with them. But whatever it is, you want to know what the next steps is. Oh, should I reach back and call you in a couple of weeks? Yeah, you know what? If you don't hear from us in two weeks, we're busy. You know, ping me and let me know. Oh, okay. Well, that means, you know, give them a phone call or send them a text, you know, I don't know, text message, but definitely a phone call or an email. Just say, hey, I'm interested in the job. Wanted to see how it's going. So you want to know about the next steps and, and hopefully that you make it, if it's an entry level, you know, phone screen with the HR, that you get the chance to talk with the hiring manager. If it's the hiring manager, well, what's the next step? Do I have to interview with the president? Do I have to give a presentation in front of a group of people? Or is it that, yeah, I'll call you tomorrow, you know? And I, I've had two of the three. I haven't given a presentation, I don't think, but some engineers do. Whatever those steps are, just try and get an idea so you can manage your expectations. And they may say, well, we're look, we're, we're thinking about making an offer, but it probably won't be until January because the fiscal year is over in December and we're going to make those hires Q1 January. We'll be back in touch with you. And if that's six weeks away, I'd say go get three more interviews, you know. If it's two weeks away, you know, go get another one or two interviews, you know, or three interviews, you know. So don't put all your eggs in one basket. If you've got time, go find another interview always, you know. If you're unemployed, find another interview, you know. Even if it's a phone screen with the hiring manager and you're calling them out of the blue, get that interview because you just don't ever know. And you don't want to put all your weight, all your hopes and dreams on one job and one interview. You want to have five or six. And if you can get two or three at the same time, their offers are on the table, that's magic. Because then you can go A, B, or C. Hmm. Let me think. A, B, or C. Hey, honey, what do you think? A, B, or C. And you talk about it and you take one. Rarely does it happen that you get more than two. Sometimes engineers will get two. If you're really good and the market's hot and you're in the right place at the right time, you might even have three at the same time to choose from. But you want to be selective. You want to understand and you want to regulate your opportunities. So all of that to say is those are the five questions that you should ask. And if for some reason you get stuck in the middle of your interview, talk about something that's relevant to the person that you're interviewing with, even if it has to be African violence. <laughs> has nothing to do with engineering or virology or microbiology. It has to do with, hey, that's something I know about. Let me ask that question because it's relevant to them, right? That's it for today. Hope you've enjoyed the show and hearing about Annette and how she hijacked your interview with her African violets question. You might be able to hijack the interview. Don't. I wouldn't recommend trying to hijack it, but if you're clearly in deep water and you're going, this isn't going the right direction, maybe you can. By turning it to a question about what's something that's relevant to your hiring manager that you think they might enjoy talking about. That's all for today. God bless. Take care. Hope that you have a great week. See you next time. I hope you've enjoyed today's podcast. Every episode is my goal is to make this podcast fun, entertaining, educational, and empowering. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please leave us a five-star review and subscribe on Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you'd like to get information on how to update your LinkedIn profile, visit www.diybjs.com. So that's all for today. Be safe, have a great week, and we'll see you next time. God bless you.
Oh, 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 oh,